Maynard Ferguson was an inspiration to a whole generation of uh, young trumpet players, myself included. He, he changed the way we thought about the trumpet. I mean, he was the first guy to like, use it as a weapon. You know, he came out with that high register and just had this, uh, this incredible sound that went right through you. And we all wanted to be like him. We all wanted to sound like him. <laughs> The, uh, the musical landscape is littered with the bodies of trumpet players trying to reach the same notes as Maynard. It was nearly impossible, but it didn't stop us from trying.
no sunshine when she's gone. Of course, long before Maynard became famous with his own bands, he was playing in other very, very big name bands. Uh, Dorsey played in Charlie, Charlie Barnett's band. Probably the biggest, though, was his stint with Stan Kenton. And we've all got the Kenton recordings with Maynard on lead trumpet. And uh, not to take anything away from Kenton, but I think there's a whole lot of people like myself out there who became Kenton fans just to hear Maynard play that lead trumpet over the band. And uh, that was a powerful big band, and yet Maynard just soared right above it. And later on, when he had his own big band, we knew it was going to just take that to another level. I have to kill time every now and then. The bass player gets winded. <laughs> okay, we love you, and we'll take one more trip to Birdland.
always did so well and what we heard on the night at the basement was to take really well known, really almost overplayed standards that everyone knows and do seemingly the impossible is do something fresh with it. I mean something completely out of the blue. Well you see what we've done the cold quarter.
I've been very lucky to meet, uh, the way I look, like to put it, most of my record collection, but one person I'd never even met, let alone played with, was one of my biggest heroes, Maynard. And when he came to Sydney, uh, I, I had to be there, front row, waiting. And um, we'd been in touch, and I had my horn under the seat, never go anywhere unarmed. And to get up and have a blow together was just, you know, after all those years of idolising this guy, it was just fantastic. And uh, to get up and play high notes beside Maynard Ferguson is kind of like uh, every young trumpet player's dream.
don't worry about that, folks. You listen to the leader. Right now, I'd just really like to uh, uh, please myself and all of you by inviting to the uh, stand one of the world's greatest trumpet players or any other damn uh, wind instrument he happens to feel like playing, you know. Mr. Morrison, right there. Maynard copped a bit of flack uh, from uh, those we like to refer to as the jazz police um, at one period in his career doing some very, very commercial you know, movie themes. He did the, had the big hit with the Rocky uh, theme and that was considered to be you know, way too commercial. He had, he had top ten hit with a big band that was unheard of. But far from being uh, getting away from jazz, it was the other way around. He was taking jazz to a bigger audience and the sound and the style and the way he played couldn't be anything but jazz. 
And um, I think uh, in retrospect now, the critics can see that's the effect it had. Probably the greatest jazz critic of all, Leonard Feather, said Maynard Ferguson is alone in uh, having a top ten hit on the US charts with a big band. Uh, and he didn't even sing.
make some noise for the great Maynard Ferguson. One of the other incredible things about Maynard is being such a big star, um, he's always been so into promoting young players and uh, getting their careers off the ground. And the, the, the list of people that have come out of his bands over the years is almost like a who's who of jazz. And uh, Maynard's quoted as saying, the only thing that would ever make him mad about someone leaving his band is if they didn't become really successful on their own afterwards. I don't think he's got too much reason to be mad. Oh, my God.
Thank you very much. Thank you, James Morrison. It's our pleasure. Beautiful man. Thank you. You know, playing the trumpet in the style that Maynard does in that upper register is one of the most innovating things you can do musically. And Maynard's in his 70s now. And going to see him at the basement, I knew it was going to be a big thrill. But I thought, you know, he's not going to have that power and he can't expect that, you know. And we sat there and he came out and from that first note he played, that sound came out of the trumpet and your hair goes back, if I had any, and uh, everyone just goes like this from that sound, and it, it's the Maynard sound. Here's the guy still touring around the world flat out uh, after all of these years and still making that incredible sound, which was the first thing that struck me when I heard him all those years ago. <laughs> 